Hi, my name is Ken Baker. I'm on the faculty here at the University of Colorado. I specialize in teaching wireless and the wireless courses, and, which is what I'm here to talk to you about, both the teaching aspect of what we do as well as the research parts of wireless as we move forward. And to get started, I need to talk to you a little bit about the industry, the wireless industry as it is today, um, which leads me to say that I have before coming to the university, I spent about 20 years in the wireless industry, primarily in the cellular, cellular telephone industry. Um, I still have connections with that today, and that has become the focus of a lot of our teaching and, and research. The cellular telephone industry is all about data. It used to be all about voice. It's moving to broadband data specifically. Uh, the wireless technologies and the new standards coming out are very data-centric. And this is driving a lot of the new development and the money where the carriers are investing in their networks. So that said, uh, there's other new technology coming around in, in the form of small cells. Small cells uh, is, is kind of a buzzword in the industry, but it's really driving, it's more than a buzzword. It's driving the architecture of the cellular networks to make smaller and smaller cells you may have heard of femtocells, you may have heard of picocells, these things are indoors or indoor-outdoors, and the whole idea is to get them smaller and to get a better signal-to-noise ratio for better data rates. It's as simple as that. Um, small cells are also in the form of unlicensed spectrum, that is uh, what we commonly call Wi-Fi, 802.11 standards, are also wrapped up into the small cell paradigm in the following way. The cellular operators are quite happy for you to change your smartphone, if you will, or download your data off of the unlicensed network. This is quite, it's, it's known as data offload, of course. They, it takes the data burden off of their network, and, and the customers are happy because they get, usually they get faster data speeds, you know, so you can find a Wi-Fi access point, which are which is not hard these days, they're quite ubiquitous. So you, you have many things going on in the, in the cellular space that's driving change. The last thing that's driving change, and this is not so new, it was actually identified probably seven, eight, ten years ago, um, that 70 to 80 percent of the traffic is coming from indoors. The, the cellular operators woke up to this, as I said, maybe ten years ago, and they have since been trying to build infrastructure into buildings. Um, this is partly because of signals and noise. It is partly because of uh, that it's good for the overall capacity and performance of their network if the cells and the, basically if you're closer to the cell site. So now you, you, you have all of these things in play and we are teaching to that here at uh, the University of Colorado. Um, one of the things that came to be in, in this last 10-year people <laughs> came to be in this last 10-year period was an emphasis on something known as distri distributed antenna systems. The operators have been spending a lot of money adding infrastructure indoors into public spaces, particularly like airports, like s large sports stadiums. Um, distributed antenna systems can be outdoors as well. There are, all, there are whole communities being served by distributed antenna systems rather than the classic tower with antennas on top. Those will always be here um, for coverage situations, but as we move into capacity limited situations, distributed antennas are becoming a bigger, bigger part of that. They are predicted to spend about $3.6 billion by the end of 2013. That's this year, um, $3.6 billion. And some predictions are by 2017, they will be spending over $5 billion on the healthcare industry alone. Hospitals and college campuses, but the healthcare industry, hospitals are very interested in indoor coverage and wireless performance for, for lots of things. So to meet this need, um, and as part of university outreach, there's a few teaching things going on. One of them, to make you aware of, is a one-week course sanctioned by the university, um, university faculty and industry partnerships going on where we, twice a year, we teach a one-week course 
in known as CIBIT, which is uh, Certified in Building Engineering Technologist. The next one will be the first week of April in Atlanta this year. And we'll do this twice a year, and it's a way for the university to outreach to industry, industry and the university partner, and we begin to train people to get into this burgeoning field of indoor distribution. Uh, here on campus in May, we will take a wireless uh, lab course that's existed for quite some time, and it will be dedicated to distributed antenna systems to DAS. We have lined up a DAS vendor who will provide us equipment. We will, we will put a DAS in the basement of this building, and uh, we will design it, build it, and put it together. Uh, the, in summary, the, the format of the course is we'll spend a couple days on um, uh, RF basics, wireless. It's a, a hands-on lab class, and then we will go do CW testing through the building to determine the propagation model that represents this building. We will apply that model to a industry standard uh, uh, design program that takes floor plans of a building and uses propagation modeling to determine where to put antennas. We'll go through this. This is the whole design process that industry goes through. And then we will build the DAS and then construct it in the building. Um, and the, we, the only thing we won't do is drill through walls and put up conduit. We'll, we'll probably, well, I know we will, we'll stick it up on the, on the wall with duct tape probably because it's a temporary installation. But enough, it will be all the equipment. We will drive it with, uh, we have plans with uh, a different industry partner to drive it with a small cell and provide coverage through the parts of this building that are not covered from the outdoors. Once we've built it, once we light it up, we will uh, measure it again to compare it to what we predicted. So again, this is in the May Mester, is what the university calls it, a May Mester. It's May 13 through 31. It's three weeks. It's every day. It's a very intensive course. Um, uh, and uh, I hope you will consider something like that. We expect to be doing this every year. That course, by the way, will migrate to be small cell, even more small cell oriented as the industry moves on to do that. So the, the, that leads into a discussion of the research. So the, the teaching aspects I've told you about, that's the Maymester and Cybit. Um, you can Google that. There's a, a website for trained Cybit, by the way. Um, so it's kind of DAS, my, my short version of this, it's kind of DAS today. It's going to be small cells tomorrow, and it's, it will not be, it will transition into small cells. And I would predict that DAS will never go completely away. It'll just be a different form of DAS that incorporates the small cell aspects of the LTE technology. Um, so all this is focused at LTE, by the way, and that includes both Cybit and the Maymaster class. Um, so we're going to morph into small cells. LTE is moving in that way. Um, small cells, you may have heard it as heterogeneous networks or HETNETs. That's another industry buzzword. And it, HETNETs refers to the fact that we have a macro layer where there's big towers. We have smaller picro cells or relay nodes, um, microcells, and then ultimately uh, femtocells inside the building. And all of these different layers need to function together and there's a lot of unanswered questions with that. So to meet that need, I have been working with the university, um, the, that's the facilities people and the IT people, as well as some of the local government agencies here in Boulder, Colorado, and industry partners, and we are on the cusp of deploying on this campus a small cell test bed. We hope to have that up fully operating before the year 2013 is out, and this test bed will encompass a, sex, a selection of small cells as well as the, the carriers have their outdoor macro cells and we can look at the interaction between the small cells and the, the large cells, if you will, the macro cells. So this test bed, I envision it as serving many purposes. We can, uh, it, and they range from just basic measurements of throughput and capacity improvements to interference between the different layers all the way to uh, cognitive networking concepts that are of interest in managing this kind of network that we're all growing into. The, there's also the data offload, how, 
transitioning traffic from the licensed spectrum that the wireless operators use to the unlicensed spectrum that is the 802.11 ends and we are moving into 802.11 AC very, fact, uh, very fast so that's the Wi-Fi component. There's handoff to do that, there's managing uh, mobility between these different layers, these different tiers. Uh, modeling is part of deploying and analyzing these uh, new networks and any network I suppose and with this test bed we can do measurements to confirm the models that are in place. Um, this background, I mean this research has been going on here for quite some time in the modeling of heterogeneous networks. Um, so that's where this is all going and um, the, the aspect of this small cell test bed I hope will be a resource both for students, for research, and for the industry to come and, and look at things like self-optimizing self networks, SON is another industry buzzword. Um, as we move into all these small cells, the network operators need to manage all of these small cells. They, the, the network, let's put it this way, the network needs to be more self-deploying and self-optimizing just because it will begin to have many, many nodes to it. Well, if you have any questions about wireless here at, at the University of Colorado in ITP, uh, feel free to contact me if you want more information about any of these things or the courses in general. I'd be happy to talk with you. Thank you.